Hi guys, it's Barry again with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, also sometimes known as the A-Track Repair Center, wherever that lettering is. Things are backwards on camera, so I'm a little confused. Um, today we're going to talk about, uh, I figure after 16 years of uh, being on the internet, I'm sorry, that is 12 years, uh, as a dedicated A-Track Repair Shop, it's probably time that I actually showed customers how to repair some tapes, uh, and it's for a very important reason, is... Uh, some uh, some tapes can actually uh, damage your machine, not irreparably, but causing you to send it in for uh, for repair that you'll have to pay for. And so let's g get a little bit deeper into that right now. Uh, the main thing on an 8-track tape that will cause problems with your machine is, you see this, uh, this is silver, here's a tape, tape cartridge, and you can see that the, the two ends of the tape are spliced together using basically a piece of foil tape. Now this foil tape is responsible for activating your automatic track change sensor. Uh, when the foil, uh, shortly before the tape reaches the playback head, uh, this foil closes a switch that's located right here in the machine, and that switch is what causes your, your head to move in response to a tra uh, track change request. Now this, uh, this splice has been replaced, uh, and this is the whole focus of this video, is uh, why you have to have your tapes repaired uh, before you try to play them and I have uh, I have managed to find a tape that illustrates exactly what I'm talking about I, I caught it red-handed in the act uh, this is an old Doobie Brothers tape and let me switch to the overhead cam view because that's got the, the sh that's got the, the, the strongest zoom okay here's our overhead cam and uh, as you can see what I tried to do I'm, uh, I'm working on three tapes right now repairing them for use as test tapes uh, using machine that uh, that automatically stops at the end of each program so that you can see where the splice is and get to it pulled enough tape out to replace it uh, so what has happened here is you can see that the splice is separated I'll take my tweezers and move this tape a little bit you can see that where the splice is splice itself is, is still okay the splice itself is not broken what's broken is the adhesive that holds the splice onto the tape. I'm just going to pull some of this tape out so you can get a closer look at it. Sorry about my, it's hard to look at the tape and be on camera at the same time. So you can see that this is the end of the tape where the splice separated from it. You can see the adhesive residue, uh, evidence where the splice was, but this is what generally happens with all 8-track tapes eventually. Not a single 8-track tape ever manufactured will get past this problem. Uh, they will all eventually do this. The reason for that is, uh, and you'll see it better when I crack this tape open to work on it, but let's go ahead and go to a, now that I've shown you the, the close-up, let's go back to a uh, little bit more sensible view here. Okay, uh, so this is the tape we're going to be working on, and you can see that the splice has separated from the tape. Now what happens is your tape is pulled from the center of a rotat rotating hub, you know, obviously, and then it makes a sharp turn right here. It, it passes your track change sensor. If there's no foil there, it'll let it stay on the same track. Then the tape reaches your playback head where the music is picked up. And here is where the tape is being driven by the cap stand against this roller to pull it through at a steady rate. And then, of course, the, uh, the, the, excess, the tape that's been played is taken back up on the outside of the hub. The same hub that supplied the tape is also the hub that, that, uh, that takes up the excess. So... Here's what would happen if this machine had not automatically stopped um, at the end of this track. What would have happened is it would have kept on, uh, it may or may not have kept on pulling the tape through. Since the tape has separated right at this point, uh, the, the cap stand would have likely just driven this tape into the machine and left this uh, you know, hanging, and you'd have to probably crack open the tape to get to both ends so you can replace the splice. Uh, so that's what happened there. And uh, there is evidence that the splice has been replaced before because the uh, the edges of the existing foil don't agree with uh, some of the edges on the tape. Uh, apparently the splice has been replaced once, so this is a good testimonial to the fact that um, all 8-track tapes will probably need service at least twice in their lifetime, because this, this, this is the second splice that's been put on the tape. Uh, this splice has now failed. And now we got to put it. Now we have to repair it again. Put a third splice on. So let's go ahead and crack open this tape so you can see everything I've been talking about. I've got this cool little cartridge opening tool that I made. I can make you one for thirty bucks uh, plus shipping, which is probably about five bucks. It's a really handy little tool. They're easy enough to make yourself. Uh, it's just basically a quarter-inch aluminum bar stock 
with a little cross piece I put in there, uh, and I've I've kind of routed out some of the cross piece so that this this cross piece doesn't move. It pretty much stays where it's supposed to. So uh, here's my way of cracking a tape open. Now one thing that I'm going to mention here is uh, I'm not a collector. Um, I'm not really too concerned that the 8-track tapes remain in their entirely original condition. Um, if a tab breaks off, you know, one of the tabs that holds the ends of the cartridge together, if a tab breaks off, I'm not worried about it. If I take a little chip, if I take a little chip out of this area with my cartridge opening tool, I'm not worried about that. My only concern is that the tape plays properly and serves as a suitable test tape. Now, you guys here are out there collecting 8-track tapes may feel differently. Uh, you may want to go through the longer process uh, that's shown on thousands of videos on YouTube of how to repair tapes. The only problem with that, every single one of them requires that you have the tape upside down while you work your tool into the uh, into the release tabs. Not a good idea to have an 8-track tape upside down. Um, it's pr it's most likely okay if you're not going to be playing it in that position, but um, not all 8-track tapes will disallow the tape to fall off the hub if the tape is in an upside down position. Uh, most cartridges have plastic protrusions that come down and hold that tape onto the hub, keeping it from you know raising up too high. Uh, but some of them don't, and if you have the tape upside down, that tape can fall right off that hub. Once that happens, it's a real pain in the butt to get it untangled. Uh, it's probably easier just to spool the whole doggone thing onto another cartridge and then spool it back into the original cartridge. You know, so anyway, we're going to avoid that problem by replacing the splice. Uh, and we'll, we'll imagine that this tape has not yet failed and it still appears okay. We're going to go ahead and replace the splice to keep it from doing what it just did uh, because if, it, uh, if this machine had allowed to continue and didn't stop, it's possible that the tape could have been drawn into the machine several feet of tape and it would have still sounded just fine, played just fine because it's still running past the playback head and the cap stand is still pulling it. But the only problem is the uh, the spent tape, instead of being drawn back into the cartridge, is now inside your machine. And sometimes you can get it all out, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you're going to have to send it back to me uh, so that I can uh, get get inside the machine to, to get it out of there. So let's, uh, without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and start working on this tape. Make sure my DVD recorder is running, and it is. All right, so we've got my uh, little card opening tool. I'm just going just gonna to stick it right here, give it a quick jerk. Stick it on this side, quick jerk, that side's open. And on this card, we, do, we don't need to work a screwdriver in here to release the tabs in the back. Uh, they pretty much kind of released on their own. Maybe they haven't, so let's go ahead and get a big old uh, 5 16 straight screwdriver in there. Right back here, very quick jerk. A slow jerk, you're going to break stuff. Quick jerk, it'll separate properly in most cases. Quick jerk, that side's already separated. Okay, and once again, you do have the cartridge right side up, correct? <laughs> okay, here we go. Pull our top cover off. Okay, so what we're looking at is a tape, is a cartridge that's essentially in fairly healthy condition. You can see that it had, uh, there's there's not a whole lot of excess tape. Uh, like, for instance, some tapes, you open them up, especially tapes that haven't been played in years and years. For some reason, they tend to unwind. And on some tapes, you're going to find this when you open the cartridge. You're going to find a bunch of extra tape. Um, and it's not good to have all that extra tape, but it's also not good for the tape to be too stiff between this point and that point. So the most important part of servicing 8-tracks, besides replacing the splice to prevent damage to the tape and the machine, is to make sure that there's the, uh, the correct amount of slack between here and here. Too little slack, and the tape's not going to be pulled back into the cartridge. The machine's going to want to pull it out. Uh, naturally, too little slack, and it's going to be too stiff to turn properly. Uh, so. This tape uh, appears like it was in pretty healthy condition, so I'm going to return it to its original state with the same amount of slack that it had before. I'm just going to wind it back around like this. And uh, keep in mind that I am a I am a machine expert. I am not an expert on tapes. I've repaired a few thousand tapes for customers when I had time to do tapes, but I am by no means the guy who knows everything there is to know about all types of tapes out there. Uh, you'll find it on the internet. This is just basically a quick. You know what, that does look like it's going to be maybe just a little tight. Uh, the, the, the hub of tape, no, the hub of tape's got, that hub of tape, that's, that's a little tight. I'm going to go ahead and relieve this. I'm, and the way that you do that, make sure you keep enough slack in the tape. Because you just, you just unwind it once. 
and then you repair it as as you normally would and you go ahead and let that excess tape remain in there and as the cartridge plays more you know several times it'll eventually even itself out as far as tension throughout the entire length of the tape hopefully that's what it'll do <laughs> so here we go you know now when you send your tapes off to a to a dedicated tape repair service um, it's not um, it's not fair to expect them to go through all this making sure that there's the right amount of slack and test playing it several times to work it back into shape it's not fair to expect them to do that uh, for like the five dollars per tape that most customers are willing to pay so when you send your tape off to a professional service they're gonna put a new uh, foil splice on and they're gonna fix the pressure pad either replace it or fix it if it's one of these types and it's just a piece of felt that broke off okay now we're gonna go to our splicing block the tape is ready let's we're gonna go ahead and cut away the bad stuff You want to make sure that you remove the adhesive that held the previous splice together because that's not obviously held onto the tape too well anymore. You want to cut all that out. You want to attach your stuff to fresh tape as, as fresh as can, uh, can be done. Alrighty, now the tape is ready for repair. It's ready to splice back together. Now you'll note that a lot of professionals prefer to do diagonal cuts when they're splicing. Um, with an 8-track tape, that's not a good idea because this little foil piece here When it when it when it crosses that automatic track change switch, usually a tiny spark is created right there. Uh, especially uh, now the way this you can see that this piece is cut square. Let's go to the overhead view, get a bit, little better view of what I'm talking about here. Okay, you can see that this the edges of this splicing tape has been cut square. Uh, so when this thing crosses the track change sensor, you've got this full width of foil to handle the current that happens when that thing demands that current to change track so it's just a momentary demand of a couple amps uh, for that track change solenoid to pull in and then it's done with it now if we were to do the so-called professional thing and cut this tape diagonally like that uh, that track change sensor when it actually triggers is going to be right about there it's just inside you know as long as all it needs is enough foil over uh, an eighth inch not even an eighth of an inch to trigger that track change mechanism. I'm sorry, I got off camera there. That's all we need is an eighth of an inch. So you can see that when this diagonal foil crosses that switch, the spark is going to be created in an area that's only about half the width of foil. That's a little bit too much current to spread over too little of an area, and the spark that's created by that will eventually blow this section out. Um, so that's not a good idea. I, I really think it's better for an eight track to splice straight instead of diagonally. And that was my explanation of it based on physics, basically. Okay, now we're going to go to our um, splicing block. I need to dig into my tape repair drawer and see if I still have the stuff to do it with. Okay, let's move, let's switch cameras here. Let's see. Okay, here we have. Now you can spend thirty-five bucks on a fancy aluminum splicing block if you want, uh, or you can take a free old credit card or uh, you know a. a, a an un, unspent gift card, an, un, an unpurchased gift card that you, you know, you find them at Subway, Pizza Hut. They've got all. They've they've always got these little complimentary credit card type materials laying around that that's, that are free to take. And so uh, what I do is I just uh, and I stole this idea from someone else on the internet. Is just take you know cut your credit card up in such a way that you know the first thickness is the foundation, and then the, the next thickness is the part that holds your tape in place. And uh, it's really mainly a matter of experimentation. Uh, naturally, it can't be wider than the tape because then it won't grip the tape and hold hold onto it. If it's too narrow, then of course it's going to cause a pretty big crease in the tape. So it's just a matter of your own individual taste. It's not a critical area of the tape. It's right where the splice is, so no meaningful information is going to be right there anyway. So um, that being stated, let's go ahead and press this puppy down into the, my splicing block. Just like this. It's a very simple operation. It does sometimes take patience and some deftness with your with your hands like this one I don't have quite tight enough or maybe the tape is just a slight bit off width now now it's holding the tape in place and now the rest is pretty easy uh, I do strongly 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 recommend tweezers for this you don't want to be touching that new splice with your fingers because some of that adhesive is going to come off and stick to your finger making it not as effective to uh, hold it on the tape so let's find our splicing material 
you can find it either in rolls like I've got. You can also find it pre-cut on uh, on like little cards. You can find you know a couple dozen you know splices pre-cut. Only problem with those is they're cut diagonally, so I don't consider them really good for a track repair. Uh, I much prefer and much pr recommend the round stuff that you can cut as you need. And, uh, eBay is a good place to find it. You can go to Kate's Track Shack. Probably the A-Track Shack has it. I don't sell supplies because well, this is a repair shop and I just have so much time. Okay, so now we're just going to take two pairs of tweezers. I'm going to be careful not to grip this thing too hard and put indentations in it. Let me just lay it right over a thing like that. Press it in place. Now it's really, really important to go over it, to rub over it, make sure every little square millimeter it's a strong dose of adhesive right there. Okay, and that's it. You just pull her up. If there's any overhang, you want to take a pair of really, really sharp scissors and trim it away. It is customary for the tape to be just a little bit narrower where the splice is, even with manufactured tapes. It is customary for the tape to be just a little bit thinner in that area. Okay, now you can see I've trimmed it up nicely. Uh, this is one of my best jobs. I don't usually do it this well, to be honest with you. This looks like a pretty professional repair. And then the rest is pretty easy. You just spool everything back into the cartridge. And since we've got a little more slack than we want, we have to be really careful that we don't have this tape binding on anything when we snap that top back on. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm not used to doing this, especially this on camera. And I'm, I'm not going to bother playing the tape because, I mean, it's... It's pretty self-explanatory. That's the reason I'm fixing tape. Now you'll find some tapes that were actually manufactured with the tape also going around these posts instead of you know on the hub. Not really sure why they do that. I can't really think of it as being intentional because these posts are stationary. Uh, they don't they don't they don't move. And even though these aren't stationary, even though these don't move either, um, I just don't see where they would add more friction where it's where there's no reason for it. So, and it's really important that once you get your tape kind of, you know, semi-placed back in the cartridge, the rest of the work you want to do with the hub, and you want to make sure that this this is where the tape is pulled out on the on the right side of the hub here. This is where the tape is being pulled out, and you want this to always be right about there. You don't want this to wander over here because then it's the the rest of the cartridge is gonna s is gonna press it down and and, uh, and pinch it. So you want to be sure to uh, actually, you want to try to simulate as much as possible natural, the natural playing mode, the natural playing process. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rotate the hub itself. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this fairly tight, and just use a combination of rotating the hub and advancing the tape at the roller, so we've so we've got a pretty nice. Pretty nice arrangement there. We want to make sure that this is really inside the cartridge. Okay. And then from this point, this is this is good enough right now to go ahead and snap that top back on. But I'm going to take just a little bit more slack out of it just to make sure that we don't have points where this tape is going to bind when I snap that cartridge top back on. Kind of work it just a little bit more. Now the rest of the job I'm going to do strictly at the roller. You'll see that this slack is eventually taken up as we naturally play this tape. You can see that slack gets eventually is eventually uh, working itself out. Come on, baby. This is the part you can do as you're working the front of the card. You back on anyway. We don't have to mess with it right now. But the tape is a okay, it's in, it's in pretty healthy shape again. It's ready for the uh, card top to be snapped back on. And if we rotate a few more times, it'll eventually. That's the optimum. That's the optimum uh, arrangement right there. So now we can snap that card top back on. If I did not break off the tabs, which I didn't in this case, so all the tabs are still good on this tape. Then we just snap it back together and we're done with it.
And of course, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the pressure pad. And since this one's okay, there's there's not much to really cover on that one. Uh, this this is a spring type pad with the foam, with the little foam rectangles. Uh, those are the the best the best. Uh, that's the best arrangement. The foam pad uh, is not is is good. Now we'll just snap this card back together. Okay, and she's ready to play, and we're, we're even ready to give it the the Barry Phone Integrity Test, which no one else in the world seems to know about. I'm the only one who seems to have discovered this. So let's let's move to the view of the it's normally the unit under test. Let's see, and let's back off this camera a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. And uh, this is the this is the the Barry Phone Tape Integrity Test. <laughs> what I'm going to do, uh, there's a lot in the background. Let me just put something up here so it's easier to see the, the that thin tape material. Okay, now here we go. Uh, <laughs> this might scare a few people, but I'm going to make sure this tape is in good playing condition before I pop it in. Make sure that that it's not going to stick because there, there's no slack and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull about a foot. I can already feel some resistance. I, I this tape may still be too tight, so I'm going to pull it out a foot. And, uh, let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I think I'm going to keep zooming on you. Okay. Now the 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 part of the tape that's closest to the center, you do not want to pull the other side. So you want to grab this side, close to the center. I'm going to grab it, make sure all the slack's out, give it a quick yank. Look at that. And the whole tape just whoop, sucks right back into the cartridge. That's how you know that the cartridge is in good shape and it's ready to play. If it won't do that, you need to work on it some more. You need to take some slack out of it. So let's try this again. Okay. Let's pull out about a foot. Okay. Quick yank. And it draws itself all back into the cartridge. See, when you pull on this, when, when you pull on this side of the tape, it rips it from the from the middle, from the center where it's being pulled out of. It comes out fast enough to where that hub continues to turn because of the momentum. Uh, that weight, the weight of the tape on that hub, uh, causes it to keep turning after uh, after you give it that yank. So that the the action of the hub continuing to turn is what draws the tape back in the cartridge. Now, if if the, if the tape is too tight, that hub won't continue turning, and that's how you know you're not ready to put it into your player yet. So that's uh, that's a quick little trick that uh, that you saw it first on Barry's 8-track repair because that's the only place I've ever seen it in my 12 years of being an, a dedicated 8-track repairman and in my 45 years of being a, a professional or at least a semi-professional technician at times. Uh, th there's never been a time that I wasn't making money fixing something even if I was working HVAC or supermarket clerk or whatever I was doing. So, okay, let's go back to... Uh, so this uh, this repair is complete. Uh, this tape is fully repaired. It's ready to pop into a machine. I don't have a machine handy at the moment to test it with, uh, but this tape's ready to go. And so we've got another tape. Uh, now this one already has a new splice. I can tell that I replaced it some time back, but, um, but I don't like the splice. It's diagonal cut, so I'm going to change it to a straight cut. And I just got to find my foam windscreen that I just pulled. I just bumped off my microphone. Find the old flashlight here. There we are. Pardon noise alert. Okay, now I'm set to go again. Okay, so this one, uh, this one, uh, we have access to both ends of the tape, and we really didn't even have to pop the top off that last tape because the uh, the, the, f the pressure pad was good, and uh, and we, you could do all the repairs from outside the outside the cart, so we didn't have to pop that last one, uh, and we don't have to pop this one either. So we'll go ahead and repair this one without popping. Let's see here. Let's find the right camera. Be right here. Now this one's going to be really easy. It's just going to be a quick. It's going to pull out enough tape. Ooh, this tape is this tape is too tight. This tape is not going to play. But this one's a good one to uh, pop open and see what's going on in there. Here we go. Pop. Pop. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, as we can see, we've got some we got some trouble here. Uh, one thing, the height is not even. Um, the tape uh, in the middle is much higher. It's about 
probably about a sixteenth of an inch higher on the hub than the rest of the tape, and the fact that it, that it's being held that high and not naturally sinking down to to the proper level, that tells you right off the bat that the tape that this is a tight tape. It's not going to play right. So we're going to try to fix it the, the quick way. Uh, no, you know what? I'm seeing accordion. I'm seeing the accordion. This tape in the center here. It, you can see that the edge has got that zigzag shape of the accordion. So what we've got here is a bad tape. And in Barry's A track repair shop, what that means is a tape that's not in a properly playable condition. It's just not acceptable. So there's where it goes. And you're a foxy gal, but can't use you. Takes care of that. Okay, now we're going to move on to the third tape. If I can find my face again. Okay. Oh, some more Anne Murray. Okay, ideal. Alrighty. This one, uh, this is a tape that's, you know, a fairly. What camera am I using here? Wrong deal. Okay, we're using the overhead cam. Okay, this tape is a fairly healthy tape. I can see that I've got my overhead cam in a really strange deal. Um, it's a tape that's typically played properly until it got to the point where it's really a good idea to replace that splice and see if we can find a closer view of this thing. I guess that's about the closest I've got at the moment. Uh, you can see that there's there's some wear. There's quite a bit of wear on that foil splice. It is a diagonal cut splice. And to prove the point that I made earlier, if you look closely, you can see at the very tip of that diagonal, this little, uh, whatever they would call it, the, the, the little triangle that's formed by this tip, that part is gone. You can see that that's no longer a sharp a sharp point. The, uh, the tip of that triangle is worn away by the repeated sparking of the uh, track change mechanism uh, being distributed over too narrow a width of conductive material. So um, this is going to be a much better performer if we go ahead and replace this diagonal splice the uh the straight cut so let's do that real quick i'm just going to pull out enough tape i can tell by the it's a, it feels really loose so it's either a really short tape or it's got too much slack that hopefully will work itself back in as we play the tape let me try to stay on camera here sorry guys okay a little thing here now some tapes, if they're tight, may not pull out enough to get both ends of the splicing block. And uh, in that case, uh, it's probably better to just pop the cover. Uh, that way you've got a lot more slack to work with because you can move the tape away from the rollers and posts and all that cool stuff. So so these two edges are lined up close enough. Got us a little length of tape, if I can find it. Look at my splicing tape. Splicing tape is one thing that I hadn't considered when I made my super cool new uh, tool rack that has more than 100 tools, every single one of them labeled, and, uh, and all the receptacles for them labeled as well. Okay, well, it appears that I have temporarily lost my roll of splicing tape, which is a, a little embarrassing for a man in my position, but since I don't claim to be an 8-track tape repairman for hire, I'm not going to beat myself too much over it, but it does mystify me where in the world some of this stuff goes when I haven't moved... I'm still working in the same three square foot area that I've been working in. It's, uh, it's actually a little bit frustrating at times. But for the moment, folks, it appears that I have actually lost the um, roll of splicing tape. So give me a couple of minutes to go cuss on my own in the bathroom. And I'll uh, probably come back with a fresh perspective and be able to find that stuff. So I'm going to take the uh, mic off here just a moment.
Yeah, Robert Goulet came in again and, and rearranged all this stuff on my bench. So I did find it, and here's the um, repair process really quick. Just going to take off about a, about three quarters is the perfect length. Uh, too little, it may, not, it may not make proper contact too much. It's going to hold that solenoid in longer than it needs to, and which isn't too good for the solenoids. So we're just going to drop this puppy right on in here. So the camera can see what I'm doing. Then... Then smooth it out. And pull her up and check for trimming needs. Um, there's just a little touch of overhang there, so we're going to remove that. Okay. Now we can't do our we we can't do that Barry phone tape integrity test. Um, we we can't do that test with the tape in its current in, in its current position. Right now, it's coming out the the hole where the head comes out. That's not where we want to do that. We want to bring this tape back in. And you'll notice that at any point, I never ever had this tape upside down. It's just a habit. That's a good thing to get into. One of those things to avoid. Okay, we do need to open this car just because we have to replace the pad. That's good because um, wouldn't really be a complete presentation without that. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open. Let me find the right camera. There we are. Okay, yeah, the the splice was good enough, but I decided to replace it, and now I see that the pad. Uh, this is the foam type pad, and I push it down, and it's not springing back up. It should spring back up immediately. You sh there should never be a point where you can actually have your finger not touching the pad as you're letting up on it. The pad should react that quickly. So this has a bad pad, so we'll have to open her up. Here we go. So you make sure we got a good camera angle. Uh. Maybe try. Uh, maybe try this one instead. Uh. Uh, it's a little better, and we'll just grab a book so we can raise that up a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, and I'm just going to do the same thing to this tape. Just get my card opening tool and give it a couple good cracks. Go. They're both sides separated at once. I can see that the, the rear tabs are still holding in place, so we're going to crack those. And on some tapes, on a lot of tapes, you'll find a center tab as well, and needless to say, Pretty much figure out how to deal with that on your own, I'm sure. Alrighty, so this tape is separated. It's ready to pull up. Okay. And inside, yes, we've got, uh, there's quite a bit of slack there. Um, <coughs> that's just the right amount of slack to where we probably don't want to take it out because winding this thing an extra turn around the hub is going to shorten it so much that we may not have any slack. I'm going to take my chances and hope that this car should will eventually play itself. In fact, we, it'll, we can probably get it to do it. Let's just let's simulate the playing process by pulling this uh, cap stand or by pulling this roller through the tape across the roller just like the player would. We're just going to simulate the playing process, seeing if this, uh, if this slack will work itself out. And as you can see, it's already doing so. Uh, not really, but it will eventually thing properly around everything and I know I'm being excessively time consuming with this video it's, uh, but it's, it's best to cover as many bases as I can think of at the moment okay so now we're just simulating the, the playing process and you can see that the let's switch to a different view here okay. we're simulating the playing process and you can see that the, the slack is slowly being worked out it's just a tape that hasn't been played. It's been sitting for years, and tapes do tend to unwind for some reason if they've sat for that long. So we can see that this will eventually work itself out, and so I'll speed it up the preparation process. Okay, and now the tape's in pretty good shape, ready to play. We're going to, as I mentioned before, we can't have any slack in this area, so we're going we're gonna to get rid of that slack. Always want to make sure your tape is always wound properly around everything. If anything gets unwound, 
easily turn into a nightmare to fix. So you don't want to be careless with this kind of thing. You don't want to be in too much of a hurry. Well, if I sat there and baby this thing the right way, it's going to take a long time. So we'll just do it a different way here. I'm just going to take the slack out of this part right now. Okay, I'm going to have to be happy with this right here. This is about the best I can do in a short amount of time that we've got. The important thing is we just want to make sure that the tape is in the proper orientation. Okay, now we're going to replace the pad, which on some cards, the pad's mounted to the top part, like on this one. Uh, on this one, the, the pad is actually mounted to the top, and it just pulls out. There's usually uh, a little slot between the halves of the pad that's designed to fit into a little, per uh, like a tab that sticks up in the cartridge. And so we're just going to grab a replacement pad here. Uh, these instantly come from uh, atrackavenue.com. Uh, John's got some very nice pads that he makes. Just gotta, on this one, we just have to cut backing. Uh, the pads come separated, but the backing is common. And whether or not to leave the backing on, this is peeled away, uh, and you can stick it to things. Um, it's really up to you whether you want to stick it um, or just stick it down in there as is. Um, I kind of go by a per on a per tape basis when I decide that, and I can see that this pad has not been slotted in the center. So I'll just give it a quick little slot. It's not really important. Just kind of helps it fit a little easier. Okay, so now we've got a little slot created in this thing. Almost. Maybe we'll live without the slot. Maybe not. Let's just see. I don't know if I can get my hands or my fingers in here to do a little bit of deft artwork. And that's enough of uh, a separation, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make it complete. We'll just grab uh, an X Acto knife here. Cut down through it to give it a better slot. It's a pretty, pretty decided slot there, so. Okay, so what all I've done here is I've just cut, I've just cut, made a little slit right here so that there's a bit of a slot. And then that slot fits into this little matching tab that sticks up through the cartridge top. things for sure. I'm sh certainly not as experienced doing this on camera as a lot of guys are. From what I'm seeing on the internet, I'm actually pretty sucky at this when I'm doing a tape. So we're just going to make sure that that's pushed down there all the way. Make sure that our backing and all that stuff is not disturbed. Yeah, I, I generally don't use the adhesive to hold the tape in place because it, it tends to s keep its own position. That's one thing about the A-Track format is they designed a lot of things to where um, the laws of physics do most of the work. Like the fact that, a, uh, like the, fact that the, the motor pulleys generally are fatter at the middle to keep that, uh, to keep that belt centered. That's a pretty, that's a pretty involved... Uh, process when you come to physics. And for some reason, I can't get this doggone pad to stay down. Maybe it's not supposed to. Okay, so at any rate, we're ready to pop the cover back on. We've got the cover in place, and of course, when we get it fully in place, it'll, it'll pull itself to the proper position. Okay, so I've got the pad worked onto the... Uh, I back this camera off that yeah it is a DXC three thousand so we should be able to back it off but I don't have it yet fitted with remote zoom so we can't back it off but I can do this there we go that's a little better should have done that at the beginning sorry guys <laughs> okay so we're pretty well uh, centered and positioned now we're ready to put this piece back on and 
AMC. And just before we just before we smack it down for the final snap, let's make sure that this tape moves freely. Because it's really, really, really easy to bind that tape between two pieces of plastic when it's not exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay. And since I was able to uh, repair this cartridge without breaking the tabs, it snapped right back together. Otherwise, I would just put some scotch tape around it, maybe some shipping tape, since shipping tape is stronger. Uh, or if, if you're you know, especially deft, you can just run a little bead of epoxy around the perimeter of the cartridge, and that'll put the thing back in place, too. Okay, so this uh, this tape's pretty well ready to go. And, uh, I'm kind of tired of doing this, and you're probably kind of tired of the way I'm doing it, not being able to see what the heck I'm doing most of the time, so you're probably ready to get rid of me just as much as I'm ready to get on to the next video. So let's go ahead and stop this thing. This is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. I'm ready to go into my familiar spool. If you have an 8-Track player in, uh, or a car unit in need of service, you can reach me at 928-533-9666. I perform uh, FM conversions on classic car AM radios uh, with or without 8-Tracks. Uh, I can add USB reader, Bluetooth, auxiliary input, just all kinds of cool new stuff. Uh, my website is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time.